Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today, we will be looking at the American Motors 1976 Matador X by AMT. Now this model kit comes from my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Here they come, the boys in the bright red matador, waving the hands in the air. Who do they think they are? And where did they get that car? All right, <laughs> so here we have the new Matador X for 1976 by AMT. And as you can see, it's a very nice looking car. This is the first year where they got rid of the circular turn signal lamps and put in the square ones for the grill. As we turn up to the side of the box, we see it says 76 Matador Coupe. Build it one of two exciting ways, stock X or high performance street machine shown here. Get a custom steering wheel, pro stock hood scoop, custom decal striping, tunneled taillights, Goodyear tires, custom side exhaust and Krager SS wheels. Fun to assemble 125th scale hobby kit for modelers 10 years through adulthood. And here you can see it's got the standard go power for your Matador, 360 cubic inch V8 with two barrel carbs Torque Command Automatic Transmission. You can also build this model as a Stage 2 power pack with a four barrel carburetor and manifold, or as the Stage 3, which is the ultimate induction with dual quads, high rise manifold velocity stacks. Now this model kit I did buy second hand, so you're about to see some interesting stuff inside as I lift off the lid. And here we have all our components. And now somebody was nice enough to put some of them into paper towel. We do have our instruction sheet and a decal sheet, which we'll take a look at toward the end of the video. Then we've got our chrome in a nice plastic bag here. And then our glass has been placed inside the paper towel, which keeps it from getting scratched. And then we have our nice body, interior tub and undercarriage. And then the chrome grill in a paper towel, because I guess, and the bumper there too. I guess they came out of the bag. And then a whole bunch of white components, two piece plastic tires, ooh, and uh, a bunch of other things sitting in a plastic bag as well as at the bottom of the box. Our instructions for this model kit are the three panel fold out brochure style, as we can see here, which should undo that way and then open this way, much like a book. So let's take a look at each individual panel. Here's our instruction sheet for the beautifully detailed 360 AMC engine. And as you can see, we have a left and right hand side engine block, as well as a left and right hand side automatic transmission with a starter motor that glues on the side. We've got an oil pan, valve or cylinder heads and valve covers for both sides. And then we have three choices of intake manifolds, just like it said on the box. You have the standard two barrel carburetor setup with the air cleaner. The air cleaner can also be used on the four barrel carburetor setup with a four barrel intake manifold. Then we have our intake manifold with the high rise dual quad high rise intake manifold right there. And our intake horns, pardon me, and two barrel carburetors. Upper radiator hose, oil uh, coil and oil filter put together. Distributor, front timing cover, oil filter, alternator, pulley assembly, emissions pump, and our fan. Panel 2 shows our wheels going together with the AMC rally wheel in the center, then our two-piece tires with an inner ring at the back, and you build four of these for the stock version, and then in the street version you just use the two mag wheels at the back, well, four mag wheels all the way around of course, but then the big street tires in two pieces and the two rear inners. Panel 3 shows our highly detailed chassis going together. And here you have your rear anti-sway bar, your upper and lower differential, your two shock absorbers, two springs. You've got the giant exhaust system in here with catalytic converter and the little exhaust extension to go and tie up your V8. Then you got your transmission support and axle blocks, as well as your assembled engine. 
This chassis pan is very much the same one as in our 1975 Bobby Allison race car. Panel 4 shows our very groovy interior, and if you did see that Bobby Allison race car version of the Matador, you know that all of this was blanked out. Well, this is how the upholstery looks in the stock version. We have the rear seat back and seat cushion, a console, a shift lever, two-piece bucket seats, interior door panels, a dashboard, and your choice of a stock or a custom steering wheel, and that all goes into the interior floor. Panel 5 shows our body going together, and then here we have our body shell and the rear pan, and our taillights go inside. You do get the option of putting on the bumper or leaving it off, and you also get bumper guards at the back. There's our body shell again with all the glass going in place. We have a battery which hooks in. There's our firewall. The interior completed will pop in underneath, and then the chassis on the bottom. You do get metal ax axles in here, and the wheels will go into there. Radiator wall support, the fan shroud, and two fender panels also go inside the car. Panel 6 shows the final assemblies for our street rod, and it does say to cut out the hole in the bottom of the hood, and then add in this really cool two-piece air scoop. Then we have our side exhausts, and then our grill and a front pan will pop in underneath. Panel 7 shows our final assemblies for the stock version. Here you have your hood going in place, your grill, your front pan, and your bumper with the two bumper guards. And here we have our bright white Matador Sport Coupe. As you can see, it is quite nice. There is a cross bracing in here on the fenders, which need to be removed. That was so that the fenders would be in nice alignment during the molding process. As we turn this up, you can see our door handles in place there, as well as the side marker lights. Then underneath, we have some mold marks and whatnot. There's the three holes to drill in for the spoiler. That's on the Bobby Allison race car, or Mark Donahue one. And then on this side, we have our gas filler door. Now, there aren't any of the insert panels in here for the, uh, like on the Bobby Allison car. However, that's okay. We got the wide open end. And if you can see here, there's a thin area and that again is for the uh, NASCAR sports scoop for drilling out for your gas filler. But on the stock version, this is basically how you get the kit. Now next up I have the hood here. And if we turn it upside down, you can see there's a nice matting underneath. There are mold marks in various places that are not too good to have. There's the square for cutting out for the uh, tunneled ram. And as you can see, the hood does fit on quite nicely on here. Not too many gaps. There's our back panel as well with the tail lights and the license plate and our little backup lights in the license plate shroud, which again ends up going on quite nice with a good fit toward the back. And now we look at the undercarriage of our car and again you can see some really nice detail work from AMT. You got your gas tank right here and then all the floorboards. Inside are different brake pulleys and cables as well as the wiring. Very simplistic up front. If you're looking for a more detailed suspension system, you'll have to add bits in. There are mold marks all underneath on the inside of the floor pan, which is nice that they're not on the highly detailed side. And you know what's cool? This car, the Matador, was also used in the James Bond movie, Man with the Golden Gun, in a scene where it even flies. Here we have our interior panel. And as you can see, it is very much like our Bobby Allison race car. Flat and got a nice carpet detail. There's the pedals for the automatic. And that's just what we need under this. Again, turning it upside down, you can see the mold marks, which again will have to be sanded flat in order for this to fit nicely inside on the top of that chassis. Now these are all the white components for our car. Somebody went a little bit uh, snipper happy and popped all these pieces off the parts tree. So I do hope in my model kit there's none missing. But as you can see, this section in here is like our engine and drive shaft. Then over here we've got our wheels, or the wheel backs, and then our suspension components. We have in this little area here all our interior components, and then some custom body pieces as well as the under hood components. Here we have all our engine components, 
And again, like I said, I hope nothing is missing. We have our exhaust pipe, catalytic converter, and exhaust extensions from the manifolds here. We also have our left and right hand side engine block and transmission, and oil filler cap, starter motor, oil filter, I do believe, distributor, uh, oil pan, front engine cover. Here we have the two barrel carburetor intake manifold, the four barrel and our dual quad high rise, as well as our cylinder heads, and our valve covers. There's a nice air cleaner with the proper snorkel extension. And then our fan with the clutch in the center, power steering pump, belts and pulleys, and then uh, alternator, I do believe will be in here as well as, let's see, power steering, air conditioning, I do believe it is. So again, lots of nice detail in this model. Here we have the components that you would see underneath the hood of your AMC Matador. The inner front splash aprons, our radiator and radiator support, battery, firewall, and this is the fan shroud that goes on the top. And I'll just bring some of these up to the camera. You can see the nice shock tower detail on the top. Again, there's the rivets and bolts on there. Underneath, this will all look good. There are some mold marks up in the top, which will have to be removed. But this is what they do give you in the stock version versus the NASCAR. Then we've got our really wide radiator going in here on our rad support. On the other side, it looks accurate. You don't really see this from the front of the car, but still get rid of those mold marks and paint the whole thing flat black. It'll hide from the front if anyone looks underneath. The firewall is not too bad, a little bit mild on the detail. You've got all the wires and everything going in the right places. But again, there's some flash and mold marks on the back. Battery is quite nice, but does look really small and narrow for a car this size. Again, though, it's hard to know what AMC really used back then. And here we have our suspension components for the undercarriage. We have the upper and lower differential going in with our springs here. And again, there is a bit of flash on them. Shock absorbers and the cross member. And then our front suspension just consists of these two little blocks. In my opinion, this is really where the model kit shines through, and that's in the interior with all our different upholstery components. As you can see, these really look and reflect the spirit of the AMC Matador for 1976. And again, I've got a 76 AMC Gremlin in the, my backyard, and this has the proper door pull up for it, just like the Gremlin does. The rear here, the nice upholstery pattern on the doors, the armrests for the side of the rear seat. Again, you can see that great detail in there. I know it is white, it reflects a lot. Our dashboard looks like the proper Matador one with the gauges in, as well as our glove box. This thing's gonna look great when you build it. There's our bucket seat. Again, nice upholstery detail on that. And then the seats are hollow in the back, which is nicely covered by these seat backs. Actually, let's try to see if we can put one in. Yeah, you can see the gap is limited inside there. Nice fit on the components. This will look excellent once you build it, as I've been saying a few times. This is the AMC steering wheel, the Rally Sport one, and it does have the padded horn button on there, just like a real 76 AMC. This is the race car one, which is a little more flat and kind of more dangerous looking. <laughs> Center console, there is a mold mark, which is pretty bad right here, a sink mark on the side. But again, that could be done up with some filler and sanded smooth, but it does look quite correct. Oh, there's another one on the back there too. And then you've got your rear seat, upper and the bottom. This actually does go together like a true AMC just like my 76 and 77 Gremlins, with the two components being separated like that. I do believe that the Matador seat could fold down, but I'm not sure on that one, never having owned a Matador. Here we have the last of our white custom components, the two-piece hood scoop, the front bumperette and rear bumperettes. There are sink marks in them. We also have our front splash pan. There are some window blanks in here, but these are more for the custom one, not for the uh, brome coupe or whatever it was with the little square window on the side. Then we have our wheel backs and 
our bigger wheel backs. Again, you can see the flash on here, but overall they're nice and smooth. There are mold marks on the other side, which of course you got to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade or some sandpaper. Here's our chrome tree for our 1976 Matador, and this is a beautiful chrome tree actually. You do get your chrome tail lamps here, anti-sway bar, lake pipes, intakes, then we've got those Krager SS mag wheels as well as our rally wheels here. We've got both our bumpers and the grill down below. The two bumpers became separated. So I will just bring this up to the camera lens. And again, you can see the nice AMC rally wheels. These things are really nicely done. Krager SS mags, again, chrome on this looks really good. If we turn them over, you can see how deep those are. <laughs> Going through really thick tires, I do believe, but still overall really nice looking. Let's just move this off to the side and I'll bring up the grill. And again, true for 76, you got those square parking lights in there. And then kind of unfortunate that the headlights are not uh, separate molded clear, but they are molded in with the chrome and there's sink marks right in the dead center of them, which is a little upsetting. You could paint these as eyeballs, it'd look nice, but as chrome lights, not quite so good. Of course, get rid of the mold marks off the back and paint this all flat black, just like the real thing. Here we have our glass components, and these are quite revolutionary for the time period because they're not using that connected bridge across both pieces of glass. So it's really up to you and your accuracy to get this right into the windshield frames in the proper locations. So I'll say good luck on that. However, as you can see, these are nice and clear. Unfortunately, I did get some scratches into the glass, which again, I'll have to take off with the polish. You can see them right in here. But overall, shouldn't be too bad or too difficult to work with. Here we have the tires for our 1976 AMC Matador Sports Coupe. On this side are the stock tires. These are, of course, Goodyear Polyglass radials. And then over here we have the Goodyear Rally GT style wheels. Again, the thick ones into the back and these shorter, smaller ones into the front. These are the two-piece tires. So you either love these things or hate them. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. I've had trouble with these in the past. It doesn't seem like the glue used at the time actually held these together at all because they're a weird plastic. I do believe that uh, crazy glue will hold these together a lot better and then you can actually sand the edges. But again, the two-piece tire has always been tricky. If you can find something equivalent that's a one-piece rubber tire, I'd suggest using that. But again, if you can't and you got to use these, well, best of luck to you. But anyway, overall, they do go together nicely, and they do have a little bit better detail than the rubber tires, but still, take them as they are. And here we have our very beautiful looking AMC Matador X custom decals. These are really amazing looking, actually. You can see the X in here, the arrow harking back to the 69 Hurst SC Rambler, and then our AMC logo and Matador, as well as stock stripes for on the sides of the car and this beautiful AMC 76 license plate. The only downside to this decal sheet, if I can bring this up to the camera lens, you can see it's all cracked and crazed. Camera's having some difficulty focusing. Yeah, it's all uh, cracked up and crazed. And the problem with that is, as soon as this will hit the water, the decals will just explode. Now you can actually spray bomb over the top of this with some clear lacquer or clear coat. Let that dry thoroughly and then carefully cut away the edges of the decal sheet, soak it in water. Hopefully it won't explode on you. However, because it's all crazed, you will need to paint over this. And uh, that could be an interesting thing on its own. Well, I hope you enjoyed that groovy look at our 1976 AMC Matador X. And if you built this model kit back in the past, please show it to us on our Facebook page and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great look at a classic model kit, the AMT AMC Matador X. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell 
so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building! <laughs>